Hello and welcome to Delicious Simplicity. I'm Anna Trokakis. On the menu today, we have homemade fresh pasta tossed with zucchini and cherry tomatoes. And for dessert, we have fresh summer fruit with a vermouth syrup and creme anglaise. So let's get started. So today we're making homemade pasta. Um, here I'm starting with two and a half cups of bread flour. You can use all purpose if you, uh, if that's all you had on hand, that's fine. So here I have two and a half cups of bread flour, half a cup of semolina flour that I'm going to incorporate together here. And so as you know, fresh pasta is sort of, um, uh, one would think labor intensive, but it really isn't. It does take a few minutes, but I tell you, it's worth it. Um, I just I haven't made it in a long time, and I don't make it all the time, but lately there's been like a resurgence in um, making homemade pasta. And I came up with this ratio of the eggs to the flour that works perfectly, and it really makes it um, fast. So I'm going to make a well in the middle. This is really the fun part. And uh, before I did that, I should have added, here I have a teaspoon of salt. Mix that in make a well and then I'm um, in in uh, this bowl I've already um, cracked five eggs large eggs five large eggs and two tablespoons of olive oil so I'm going to pour that in and then with the fork oops I'm going to make sure it doesn't go running around And if it does, so then with the fork, you just sort of scramble them in, incorporate everything. So you keep incorporating the eggs and the flour until you get to the point where um, it's really thick. And then you use your hands. And you still want to sort of incorporate from the inside out. And so two and a half cups are approximate. You sometimes you need a little bit more flour, sometimes less. It depends on the, the flour itself. There's so many um, factors that can, get, that can get in the way as to how much flour you use. Sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. So then, once you get it to this point, you sort of just keep kneading it and incorporate all this loose flour. And what you can do is take your knife or a straight edge. I like to use the back of the knife because I don't want to ruin my knife. All right, so as you can see, we've been kneading this for a few minutes. Uh, typically, you want to do it for about 10 minutes, and that should give you a nice, smooth consistency. So we'll just do this for just a little bit more, and you can see that it all came nicely together. This is nice and soft, so it'll be, it'll be easy to roll out by hand. And um, so we did five eggs today, and that makes about well, almost two pounds of, of pasta. So if you wanted to do less, the typical ratio, and it, they can vary plus or minus a little bit, but the, typically it's, uh, th the ratio is one egg to three quarters of a cup of flour, and that makes two servings. So here we have it. This is pretty much done. And then what you would do is you would let it rest for about um, at least half an hour, an hour, something like that. And then while it's resting, you want to, I like to put it in a bowl and wrap it, I like to wrap the dough. And what happens is as you're kneading it, the, you're developing the gluten, gluten is the protein in the flour. So as you work it, that sort of stretches out and gets very rigid. So the, the, so the, the dough is very uh, rigid and tense. So by relaxing it, uh, by letting it rest, you, the protein relaxes and it sort of um, lays more um, straight. So we have one here already made, as you can see, it's nice and smooth. So 
So, and this is about a pound and three quarters. So I'm just going to use a little bit of it, about a third. Put the rest aside. So you take a piece and then you sort of flatten it out a little bit. The other thing you want to make sure is that you have a little bit of flour sitting here on the side because you're going to need it. You're going to need this flour. Then you get your rolling pin. I'm going to make this nice and round. So this pasta actually, you don't really need any meat to go along with it because there's all the eggs and so it's, it's a good, uh, eggs are a great source of protein. And like any pasta, you can use any type of sauce that you want. But because it's summer and there's lots of zucchini and tomatoes around, we are going to do, a, we're going to toss it with some sauteed zucchini and uh, cherry tomatoes. So when you roll this out, you want to roll it out to about a sixteenth of an inch. And I like to start from this end here and just kind of come forward to the middle and roll out. And you want to turn it about a quarter turn every, you know, every time. So that all the edges, so that the whole, um, the whole sheet will be one size, one thickness. Sort of like doing a pie, a pie crust. Now, as you know, you can do this on the pasta machine as well. So what I look for to sort of gauge whether I've, uh, I've uh, rolled this enough or, uh, so that it's not too thick or too thin is that you can almost, you almost it takes on this um, transparency that you can almost see the bottom underneath. So I can see the, the tile underneath here. All right, so this is pretty much done to the thickness that I want. So I'm going to um, sprinkle some more flour on it. And then I'm going to, as I said, I'm going to cut this by hand. So it'll be really rather rustic looking. So I'm going to begin by folding it in this way. I'm going to fold both sides halfway through. like so. Now I'm going to take my knife and cut little strips. And you can make fettuccine, linguine, uh, depending on the width. Uh, you know what I need to do here is put it on a plastic cutting board because I don't want to dull in the edges on my knife. So then, as I said, you just come in here and you, and you cut these to the desired uh, thickness or wide width to the desired width. So I try to be as small as I can. If I get the edges like that at the end, I just roll them all. So here we have these, uh, the cut up pasta, and then what you do is you just come in here and you pick them up, and they just unroll. See it? And it just unrolls. So you do want to make sure they have plenty of flour. So here you can see how uh, beautiful these look, beautiful, uh, nice you can make them longer or smaller depending on how big your sheet is. We did a, a small one here today, so but if you if you just make a bigger, um, cut out a bigger piece and roll it out, it'll be obviously bigger. So um, we are going to um, clean up a little bit and then cook this. So we're going to cook some uh, zucchini and cherry tomatoes and then we're going to toss it all together. So I'm going to set this aside and start working on the zucchini and the cherry tomatoes. So here for the zucchini and the cherry tomatoes topping that we're going to make for the pasta, the first thing I want to do is chop up some parsley. 
I need about three tablespoons of parsley, chopped parsley. All right, so I've taken them off the leaves off the stem on the parsley here, and I'm going to give it a fine chop. So this is about three tablespoons. That's the nice thing about cooking. You don't have to measure exactly like you do in baking. All right, so I'm going to take three tablespoons about. So there's one, two, three. And then I need two cloves of garlic. Is one, is two. Um, I'm going to add a third because one of those is small. Here that goes. And then I'm going to add one tablespoon of all extra virgin olive oil to that. And this is going to sit aside. for a little bit. And then I'm going to add two tablespoons of oil in my skillet here. And that goes. Okay, so the parsley, garlic, and oil mixture set the side. We're going to use that in a little bit later. Here I have one zucchini. This is a, lot, a rather large one, so you might, if you have the small ones, you might want to use two or three. I'm going to slice these in just maybe like a quarter of an inch. All right, so I'm going to turn on the heat. While that heats up, I'm going to start cutting up my cherries, my cherry tomatoes. We have cherries on the menu today, too. So I'm using cherry tomatoes. You can use grape tomatoes as well. So today's menu is very, I say light, sort of uh, everyday rustic Italian. We have pasta with the zucchini and the cherry tomatoes. And then for dessert, we're going to have some really delicious uh, summer fruit with a vermouth syrup. And then we're going to make some creme anglaise as a topping. Great combination all around. So here I have the oil that's nice and hot. I'm going to add the zucchini to it. And these cook for about five minutes. I'm going to add some salt and pepper to the zucchini. Just a little bit. And this is pepper. So you want to really flavor or season each item at a time that, you, that it's cooking. So I'm going to finish cutting up the cherry tomatoes, and we're going to add these to the zucchini. Ugh. 
they want about a pint of cherry tomatoes. In they go. Add a little bit more salt to them as well. So while these cook, I'm going to start working on my dessert. The first thing I want to make is the vermouth syrup. So here I have just a regular bottle of um, extra dry vermouth and two, I'm going to use half a cup of that. And in this pitcher, which, uh, in this pitcher I have um, a quarter of a cup of orange juice. I'm going to add about half a cup of vermouth. You can use other brandy sort of uh, liquor that you like. You can use Prosecco, you can use um, Champagne, you can use Spumante if you like, but I like the, the vermouth with it. Put that in here. I need to keep an eye on the zucchini here, so I'm going to give it a quick toss. Perfect. All right, so here, I ha as I mentioned, I have a quarter cup of orange juice, half a cup of vermouth. I'm going to add to that a tablespoon of sugar. And I'm just going to use a regular kitchen tablespoon because it doesn't have to be exact. So that's about a tablespoon. Goes in. I'm going to stir that in. And the syrup is done. So I'm going to set this aside. Leave the spoon in. I might, I might want to give it another stir right before I use it. So the zucchini here looks done. I'm going to add the, the reserve that I had with the parsley and the um, garlic. I'm going to add that in and cook this in. So this is going to give it just a, a touch of garlic flavor. I'm going to let that cook for a minute. So while this cooks, I'm going to arrange my fruit. So instead of doing a fruit bowl, I'm going to do sort of like a fruit platter. So here I have, so here I have this beautiful summer fruit. So we have strawberries. Put those here. I think I'm going to do is like separate piles for each fruit because I don't want it to be a salad. I want it to be like a platter. And here's watermelon. Blueberries right here. There we go. And here are cherries. The cherries this year have just been tremendous. There, um, so these are pitted. I've pitted the uh, the cherries. And what I do is instead of there's all there's all sorts of little gadgets that you can buy to pit the cherries. What I do is I come in with a little paring knife and just cut around it. So here's a beautiful platter of fruit that I'm going to put aside here for the moment as we continue with that rustic meal. This is all set, and so I'm going to turn this off. Just leave it there for a minute. Water's coming to a boil. In the meantime, I want to get ready for the um, creme anglaise that we're going to make. So I'm going to start working on my creme anglaise, and here I have this one egg yolk, and I'm going to add a second. So I'm going to use two egg yolks and two cups of milk, hot milk. Now creme anglaise is sort of um, a thick, uh, excuse me, like a thinner um, pastry cream. And it's great as a sauce on fruits, on um, cakes, on plain cake. 
All right, so I'm going to whip this to the two egg yolks. I'm going to add a quarter, uh, a quarter of a cup of sugar. And in this pot, I have some hot milk. I'm going to give it just a quick stir to cool it off a little bit. You want it to be hot. This is almost boiling. Okay. So now I'm going to temper the eggs, so which means I'm going to pour the hot milk into the the egg yolk and sugar mixture and, and keep stirring vigorously at the same time. You want to do a little bit at a time. You can use whole milk, uh, skim milk, 1%, 2%. In in restaurants and uh, in restaurants they probably use cream, but we don't. I'm gonna put this back in the pot. Okay, and then to this I'm gonna. So I measured out two cups of milk. I poured one and three quarter cups to be heated, and I saved um, a quarter of a cup because I'm going to dissolve my baking uh, my cornstarch in it. So this is a little um, different version from the typical creme anglaise. Uh, typically it, creme anglaise does not ha contain uh, cornstarch. And so what you do is you just take this mixture with just the eggs, the milk, and the sugar, put it back on the stove top and lower the heat and just keep stirring and stirring until it thickens. And sometimes um, it's very easy for it to turn to scrambled eggs. I find that if I add the cornstarch, then um, as soon as it comes to a boil, to a, almost a simmer, I know it's ready. So sort of proofs it a little bit. Okay, so the water is boiling, but it's going to have to wait because I don't want to take my focus from the cream. So you do want to keep stirring it. Okay, so you get the idea. You continue stirring it till it thickens, and it looks like this, nice and thick. See, and then you keep put it in the refrigerator to cool it. So now that the water's boiling, I'm going to add some salt, about a tablespoon. That goes in. And then I'm going to add the pasta. So this is going to cook very quick. So you put it in, and as soon as it comes back up, so here we have a good half a pound of pasta. Oops. So you do want to give it a quick mix. And you wait till it comes, so uh, when you first put the pasta in, it's heavy, so it settles to the bottom. And then as it cooks, it lightens up and comes up to the top. And once it comes up to the top, it's practically ready, but you, you let it cook for about a minute or so. So it looks like the pasta's done. I'm just going to turn this off, and I'm actually going to put it right in with the pot with the uh, vegetables, so that some of the water from the pasta will help create the sauce. So I don't want to drain it all that well. And I'm going to toss it really well. Put a 
pour it in here. And then once this goes in, there's one final ingredient that goes in. You just pull all the flavors together. So the last ingredient, ing ingredient I'm going to add to the pasta is this uh, ricotta salata. And this will bring, give it just enough flavor to bring it all together. I'm going to shred it. Or you can cut it into little cubes. If you didn't have ricotta salata, you might want to use, uh, you could use um, feta, feta cheese. There we go. So you just sprinkle that all over the top. Oh, it looks very summery. You see, you'll be eating some trattoria in Italy. here. Then we are going to put our fruit together. And isn't that beautiful? Look at that. So we have our syrup and we have our creme anglaise. So I'm going to give this one quick stir. And so I also want to plate this because it's so pretty. So now I like to serve it with the syrup, with the vermouth syrup on the side because, you know, some people may like it and some people may not. Um, so put it on the side and everyone can help themselves to whether they want to add it or not. And some blueberries. And of course some cherries on top. This is peak season for cherries. They don't last very, they're not around for very long. So I really urge you to go out and get some now. And all these produce here, all these fruits and vegetables we get at Calories' Farm Stand and Garden Center. There we go. And then I'm going to add just a tablespoonful of that, or maybe two, just to give it enough flavor, just to give it that tang so it's it's more like a dessert, like a real dessert. And then a nice tablespoonful of this creme anglaise on top. Isn't that beautiful? So we'll bring this all over here. So here we have another really quick and delicious uh, meal uh, today that we've done. Uh, maybe the pasta involved a little bit more effort, but I think it was well worth it. So we have fresh homemade pasta that you could roll up by hand and cut by hand, or you can use the old traditional pasta machine if you choose to. Um, and we've tossed that with zucchini and cherry tomatoes and, and garlic and parsley. And then we topped it off with some really nice flavorful ricotta cheese, ricotta salata cheese. And for dessert, we have this beautiful um, serving of fruit with the vermouth syrup and creme anglaise served in a beautiful dish, uh, beautiful glass that you think you'll think of in the restaurant when you put this meal on the table. So please give it a try. Uh, give us a call here at the studio if you'd like to. And thank you for joining us and hope you do it again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.